From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening on Overnight and Evenings Crypto here on LA. As I had told you that the top cryptocurrencies of 2021 may not be buy and holds for three months and that we're in a downturning market. Well, the market turned the other way today after it didn't particularly have the pop that money would have thought that would have lasted for three days. It lasted for two days. And if you got in two days ago, you made good money on this channel. And if you got in for a few hours, you made even better money. In this recording, we'll be going over the buying and selling techniques where you can get into cryptocurrencies quickly and get out of them quickly and get big money across the board. And why buying and holding for three months is not the strategy called going forward. But long-term holding is a great price point as well. We'll be going over a lot of price points and a lot of coins in this video. And you'll see that a lot of coins, which I said were up for two days and are not gonna hold it, are not holding it. They're down downtrending tonight. Very fascinating across the board. We'll be looking at Bitcoin. See, there we go. And then Ethereum, gone on a nice run, but still holding. But there's Doge, what a 24 hours it's been. And then Polygon, not particularly performing, not giving a return. And then Aave, I said get out at that certain price point, and then it trended up, we'll go, we'll go over all the details. AMP is struggling across the board. And then Compound, the coin that I said get in when you can get out, well, it downturned, but it's coming back up. We'll analyze that as well. Sushi Swap, a big opportunity across the board. We'll go over where this market is right now, where it's going into the weekend, where are the buying opportunities? Where are the selling opportunities? What are the buying and selling strategies to make you money? And this is LLI. How are you? Boy, what a day it has been. Here is what you need, know, need, need to know going into the evening. Is that coins are separating across the market in which generally there's not a lot of strength. We're not going higher. We're flattened. We're flattening out or we're downtrending, depending on the coin. But I have an opportunity for you to make money across the board. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers, a YouTube record in one year. Fastest growing cryptocurrency channel there is. Now 410,000 subscribers. So thank you for that big run at 410 in just a few days. Also, like this video. Every like helps in the algorithm rankings. And consider becoming a member. And share these videos on Reddit, Facebook, and Instagram. Come on in. I'm here with you three times a day. Evenings at 7 o'clock, overnights at 5 o'clock, starting for 15 hours, and mornings live on air at 9.30. Let's go over where we are tonight. So we are still on the cusp of trying to rebound from the fourth of four market crashes over the last few weeks. And coins, you need to understand, are not the coins and not the cryptocurrency uh, industry we had in January. In January, you could have bought a coin and then put it away, and then check back with it on three months from now, and it would have gone up a 1,000%. That is not the industry we have right now. Here, you have to be a little bit more active, and the active strategies for buying and selling that make you money is day trading, number one. Buying a coin and getting out within a few hours, as soon as you get your pop of money, and that pop could be anywhere from 20 to 50%, or second, getting into the coin and out in three days, and otherwise, buying and holding for several years. Let's go over what the opportunities are and how you choose the opportunities. Number one, the first one is the best opportunity, the day trading, which can be for a few hours, a, few, uh, a, a full day, or a day and a half. It can be done in a market in which the, the market is down that day, flat, or up. The second opportunity is not every day. It's sporadic. It's when all coins are up. You've seen a sea of green up, and that sea of green up goes for a day, two days, or three days. Same strategy, you're going in and getting out. Why aren't you holding the coins? Because they're progressively devaluing. So you're getting into them when there's a pop. So the first opportunity is when we're up or down, you get in for a few hours, you get out. The second opportunity is when the whole market is up, then you're getting into the coin, and then getting out as soon as that uptrend ends after one, two, or three days. And guess what the third opportunity is? The third opportunity is when those two prior events continue to deliver appreciation of value, you just stay in. But it hasn't happened. So here's what you need to know. I've been telling viewers for a, since the last market crash that we're on a devaluing process where coins from now will be have less of a value in three months. But you don't have to take my word for it. Why? Because if you go into a coin, on a day trade for a few hours, 
and you're looking to get out after 20% run up, and it gives you the 20% run up, but the coin is not devaluing. It's still going up. Guess what? You're rolling into the second buying opportunity, buying and holding for three few days. And then after a few days, the whole market is up. And then suddenly, what happens after three days? Hasn't happened yet today. Hasn't happened yet since the fourth market crash. But let's say it happens. What happens? You stay in the coin. And if the market goes up, guess what? Who cares if I was wrong that the market's devaluing? You're already in the coin position. The coin is going up. Here's what you need to know about what's happening tonight. I was not wrong. <laughs> so had you day traded, you would have made money. Had you understood that we had an uptrend, we had a pop yesterday and the day before, you would have made money. When should you have sold? It depends on how you approach it. The the day, uh, the, the, it, it certainly continued past day trade. It, pa it I had told you that we were up, today is Wednesday, so I told you we were up on Monday, we were up on Tuesday. I said, I don't know if we'll be up on Wednesday, but if we are up in, on Wednesday, stay in the position, don't get out. It's a three-day pop, it's a three-day up. But understand, on, Friday, on Thursday, we're going to go down. We're not gonna be up three consecutive days, otherwise I'm totally wrong about the whole market. Well, here you go. This is what's going on. So this is the 24-hour chart on Bitcoin. Started the day at 30, 5,000, it's now 34,000. So of, although Bitcoin is not a coin that I recommended you to buy in and get out on the pop, it's exemplary of what the market's doing. You hit, let's look at the, we're looking at one of the platforms, it's called Gemini, and we're looking at Bitcoin. I'm in the, I'm in the chart with Gemini, here's my mouse. We just clicked from the one day chart to the seven day chart. So here was our run. We went to 30, we went from 34 to 36, and guess what? We're back to 34, so we're downtrending. So that is the example of how you would have got in, you would have saw the potential for a few hours, stayed in, st understood that the whole industry was up Monday and Tuesday. We we're clearly on the second buying opportunity, second trading opportunity. We're on a pop. We're up for two days of the market or three days of the market, and that by the third day, the market was down. Now, it all depends on the coin. Let's look at Ethereum. So Ethereum's looking quite nice at the moment, but let's look at the uh, let's look at Ethereum, how Ethereum has gone over the last three days. So Ethereum had that run up from twenty uh, from two thousand to twenty two hundred, then fell to twenty one hundred this morning, and then went back to twenty two fifty four. So had you got had you watched the coin, you would have probably got out somewhere around here today. Um, and don't worry, because guess what? It hasn't really made much of a difference. Now, I have recommended against doing that on Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. Why? You do not want to be doing day trading or uh, pop trading, where you're in and out of the coin for two days, if the coin is not giving you more than a certain percentage of the return. So I don't care that Ethereum went up $200 on a on a $2,000 coin, that's 10%. That doesn't excite me. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that trade. I want trades where I can get 20%, 30%, 40%. So you're clearly not gonna do it with Ethereum and Bitcoin, but the reason I'm showing them is to show you how the market's going. Now let's go over why it's important to choose the coin correctly. So some people may have thought, well, let me just buy Doge. So see what happened to Doge today? So Doge started the day at 27 and went as low as 24. That's not good, folks went to 25 and then went down to 24. What does that say? One, it's not a coin you would have bought on the pop two days ago. Um, Cause guess what? The pop only went from 26 to 27 and now it's back to 24. Number two, it, sh it validates what I'm telling you. Let's look out at uh, the last market crash. Here was the last market crash, 19 cents. What's, a th what's Bitcoin doing? Excuse me, what is Doge doing? It's slightly flat, but starting to try to go back down. Not good. Polygon, flat, not a coin you would be going in and going out on. A dollar eighteen went down to a dollar oh nine today. Basically, had you tried to day trade Polygon, which you should not have, because it's not trading enough, it has not enough volatility, not enough movement, you have not made enough money. Um, yeah, I mean, some people would say, okay, well, it went from one oh four to maybe one twenty. It would have been hard to gauge that twenty percent return. But guess what? It's, it's going straight back down from that from that 120. So there you go. We had a two-day pop. Coins went up for two days, and suddenly they're downtrending again. Exactly what I predicted. We're in a downtrending economy. We're downtrending uh, 
uh, position with these coins. Now, Ave was one of the real successes for a lot of viewers. We were talking about the pop of Ave when coins um, started this run on Monday. And I said, hey, buy Ave at 178, sell it at 220. That's what I said on Monday. And then by the and then I said later on Monday, wait, we may be going into pop. We may not be in a day trade. We may be in a two day, three day pop. So stay in Ave, stay in Ave until you see you're at the the peak, the mountain, until you start to come down. So I said get out here initially 220 because I said uh, you know we're not going to stay into this to two, Tuesday. By Tuesday it was still going, and I said well obviously you're not going to sell yet. So I said watch it, see how high it goes. Watch it, how see how it goes. Look what Ave did, 246. You would have sold it then, or you sold it around 242, because you saw it started to come down. And look how low it fell. It fell $20. Now, yeah, I do see it's coming up um, another $15 since then in the last hour or so. But ultimately, here's what you could have done. You could have sold at, you know, the 240 this morning. And guess what? You could have bought it at the 220 uh, this afternoon and got ready to, to run it to, to, to 246. So you see what's going on as we see those first sets of coins. What are we learning from them? Number one, you have to buy a coin that has enough volatility. Number two, you can make, you can you can buy these coins on a downtrending uh, market. I have been predicting bearish, as you would say, not bullish, that the market is going to devalue coins over the next three weeks. That's my position. I'm bearish on coins at the moment. Why? Because coins were devaluing before the fourth market crash. There's going to be a fifth market crash. Um, there has not, there. if you look at the charts from May, coins are just generally like this, whether it's this or this or this, they're down. So, I mean, you look at the charts and the coins are just devaluing since May. I, there's no indication we're going back to May levels. But you heard what I said yesterday. I said, well, if you look at coins and you see a one day and one hour pop, a two hour pop, get in the coin and ride it for those few hours and get out. If it downtrends, it's a one, it's a, it's a day trading strategy. Or if the coins do not go down, they continue to run, roll that strategy over, keep in the position, don't sell yet. And because we may be in a pop and we were Monday and Tuesday, coins were up, oh, the whole industry is up. And I said, well, there's two things that are going to happen on Wednesday. Possibility, two possibilities for what's going to happen on Wednesday. We go up again on Wednesday, and I'm wrong. And maybe we're heading back to May levels where everything is just bullish. Everything is straight up. Or maybe I'm right, and it was just a two-day pop. And guess what? I was right. It was a two-day pop. Now, you look at that Ave chart where Ave tonight is going back up. Avi's going back up to what it was this morning. So it's not like it's going higher from what it was this morning. It's just going back to what it was this morning. It downtreaded all the day, and now it's going back to where it started the day. That's no bueno. You know, that's that whole trading range, up 3%, down 5%, up 3%, down 7%. It, coins can't keep on doing that. Um, so here's what you need to know, is if you had gone into the coins on Monday or Tuesday, which you should have, you should have gone in on Monday, stayed in on Monday, uh, because the coins are still going up. Then Tuesday woke up and the coins are still up. Stayed into Tuesday, and then you heard my real coins. I said, "Okay, we're on a we're on a pop. Don't get out yet, but watch for where you downtrend." Then by Wednesday morning, you were seeing, "Okay, Ave is now ending that 240 run." We started the day. I think we were a little bit higher than that this morning. Yeah, we went to 251. Boy, 178 to 251. That is a beautiful run in just two two something days. You would have got out at 251. You would have been foolish to hold. Why? Because look, you went from 251 all the way down to 220. That's a very bad fall. That's $30. And I got it. It's going up $20 right now. But if you really want to, if you really want to take that uh, that hedge, then get in at 220 and take that run to two to two back to 251. And if it goes above 251, then stay in. But I think Abe is devaluing in the next three weeks. So I don't want to stay in there. Other coins you need to stay away from. Amp has fallen apart. Amp was a coin that ran from three cents to 12 cents, then went down to five cents during the last market crash. Look, Amp has just fallen apart. Look what Amp has done. So Amp has never really rebounded um, well from that last market crash. My mouse is in the chart. This is where the last market crash was. It's now at the last market crash. So it is, it is almost down the mountain. Yeah, it's just sad news for AMP not doing well. Now, Compound, Sushi Swap, and Ave were the three coins which I said 
on Monday. Get in and get out as soon as they downtrend. Well, here you go. It, uh, let's, let's see how high Compound gave us a run for. So Compound's highest spot was 317. I think it says 317. So I guess that was this morning. Yeah. No, it went to 326. Went to 326 for a few hours. Oh, just recently. Um, and then it fell all the way to 300. That's a big drop. That's, oh, 290. It fell 30-something dollars in just a few hours. That's, that's significant. That's a 10% drop in just a few hours. And now it's back up to 320. So it depends on how you would approach it. You may have sold at, three, at 319 or um, your 320. I mean, I would have. I would not have held in because I would have bought it back, you know, around uh, around the 215 when I mentioned on Monday how a great buy it was. And you would have got out with a $110 or $120 profit in a $300 coin in two days. That's wonderful. That's 30%. You can't get 30% return your money anywhere in two days. That's just wonderful money. You would not, had you stayed in the coin, where would you be tonight? 329 versus uh, you know, maybe you sold out, you would have been in the same position. So it depends on the person. Maybe you want to stay in longer, but I would not have. I would not have risked it. And then sushi swap. Boy, this one's scary. Yeah, this is 24 hour chart, folks. Um, so I had talked about sushi swap on Monday. I said, hey, it's going from six to eight. And Tuesday, uh it, it, Monday it was going from six to eight. Tuesday, it was still going from six to eight. And I said, well, get ready to get out of it when it gets that pop, that peak. And it got to eight. It got to, what was it? Um, 801. You see my mouse on the chart. And then it fell. Look at that fall. Wow. Eight, uh, 731. So it fell almost half a dollar. Let's look at the seven-day charts. You see that run. Look at that beautiful run. Wow. That's wonderful. 640 all the way to 820, 8, 815. That is a beautiful run. But look at that fall. I That's scary. I would not want to be in that position. It's just too risky. Uh, hoping it's going to come back. I don't know if it's going to come back. I buy it at six something. I want to get out at eight. I get out at eight. I mean, why would I take the ride back down the hill? You want to take this ride up. And once it gets this peak, you want to get out. I mean, why would you stay in there? It's too risky. Now, it may come back to where it is. But ultimately, you understand that we're in a down devaluing market. So... There is several things that you just saw in those coins that ultimately, one, you have to choose the right coin. Two, you have to stay in the position for the run, uh, but you also have to stay by the computer or the phone because as soon as the run's over, you got to get out. You got to get out. So you saw how Alva went from six to eight. You know, hey, great. I'm, I'm running it from six to eight. I thought I was going to just run from six to seven for a few hours and get out. Oh, okay. Now we're running to eight over the next day. Okay. Are we going to go to nine the next day? No, we're not. We're going back down to the sevens. Get out. Get out quickly. <laughs> and you got the profit. Do the next coin. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy because guess what we're doing here? We're making money as often as we can make money. We're buying and taking the profit and then going and do the next coin. The next coin may not be sushi swap. And that's why we don't have allegiance to any particular coin. We may do a sushi swap 30% profit on on two days and the next day we're doing another coin we may be doing ave two days later or we may be doing you know um compound other two days it doesn't matter that's how the the the, the flexibility of knowing you are in a appreciating asset you know you're not losing your money you know you're making a profit you know you're getting and getting out what is the what is the negative of this the only negative of this is you say well maybe the coin once goes higher yeah, well, maybe the coin goes higher. If the coin goes higher, stay in the position. If the coin downdrafts like sushi swap and compound in an Ave, and then you got out because you took your profits, and then it comes back, big deal. Then buy again and go run, run it up again. But this is a protective position. It's almost a hedge against a downtrending market. If the market's downtrending, you're protected because you got in for a profitable position where you're getting in and getting out. You're not buying a coin based upon one event, in a way, for the first time you're seeing on Overnight's Crypto, Evening's Crypto, how ironically this type of approach to the market gives you a lot of flexibility. You want flexibility to get in and flexibility to get out. So you're getting flexibility to get in because you have a lot of different choice, choices of coins to buy into. 
you can buy into any coin based upon that real good run you're seeing. I'll show that, show you how to choose that entrance in a second. But on the exit, you have a lot of opportunities. Once you're up, it's easy to get out at different places. So you can get out with a few hours. You can get out in a day if it continues to stay up. And if it continues to run longer, a month, and I'm totally wrong, then you get out then. You have a lot of flexibility. Here's where you don't have a lot of flexibility. I'm going to buy a coin because my neighbor told me to buy the coin and just check back in three months to see if it's up. Oh, Lord. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I met some friend at the bar and he said, buy Cardano. It says a good coin. I don't know what the price is point. I'm just going to buy Cardano. I don't know anything about it. I just, you know, I'll just buy a price and just put it away in three months. <laughs> three months later, you're at the bar again. It's like, oh, I bought that Cardano. I haven't looked at it yet. Let me go look. Oh, darn, I lost 40% of my value. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. That was one opportunity. That was one exit strategy, buy and sell. That's horrible. So you're betting upon one event. Do it's sort of like, you know, in, you're in a maze and you only have one exit route. You don't want to do that. And the reason why you really don't want to do that is because the indicators are there with the market. This is the market you need to understand as we go into this evening and this overnight broadcast. The market is going to get hit by another PCR statement in the next three weeks. People's Republic of China. Three weeks ago, which is approaching now four weeks ago, People's Republic of China on a Tuesday announced a major statement, crashed the market, crashed from number one. We rebounded on Wednesday. On Thursday, same thing. Another PR, PCR statement, we crashed and crashed number two. We rebounded on Friday. Saturday, we went on higher. But that Sunday, we crashed on number three. No statement of PCR. We just downdrafted. And over the next three weeks, which brought us uh, up to two weeks ago, Coins were down 3% every 48 hours. And if you look at those charts, that's the May to now run. The month of May to June, and then June to July, we started, excuse me, May to June, and then throughout all June, we devalue. We had days up, but bigger days down. Up 3%, down 5%. Up 3%, down 7%. So that coins kept on going lower and lower. And now... With a fourth market crash, which I predicted two weeks ago on this channel to the day. I said when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen. What happened? We did not rebound after the market crash. And the market crash wasn't one day. It was three days. It started on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's the first thing that's bad. Second thing was we didn't rebound. We didn't come back to the price levels from before that market crash. Finally, after a week and a half, some coins, not all, maybe one or two coins like Ethereum and Bitcoin, went back to those pre-crash levels a week and a half later. No, folks, that's not a rebound. That is a slow trying to fix itself. But where are all the rest of the coins? They're either at the same level or they're down drafting. So by all indications, when you look at the charts longer term, you see a downdraft from May signaling that we're either going to go sharply down, slowly down, or progressively down. But as we go down, three opportunities across the board. One, getting a coin that is having an hourly pop. How do we find those coins? We go into our, our platform, like a Gemini. We go to the third column over, and we click it. It'll first show us the most down coin of the day. I like you to just look at that so you remember names, because guess what? Usually coins that are very badly down have big days the next day. Uh, Deo, Deriva Deo, was actually the best performing coin two days ago. Store J was the best performing coin yesterday, I believe. So suddenly you see best performing coins to worst performing coins, which means that I want you to just remember the name of the coin. Just, you know, just sort of be familiar with that name, because when you go to check tomorrow, it may be likely the most up coin. Often the most down coins on one day are the most up coins on the next day. We click it again. And then who are the biggest names right now and how much are they out up? Let's look. So, wow, Numer Air, which I've never covered on this channel. It's up 24%. This is a day tradable coin, folks. I'll explain to you in a second. Barnbridge up 12%, potentially a day tradable coin. And UMA up 12%. Everything else after that, not really interested. What are you doing with the day trading opportunity? Let me explain. With day trading, you are looking for a coin that is somewhere in the 17 to 18% approximately up range at the moment. And you're looking at the charts and you're hedging the bet that the coin is going to go from 18% up now when you buy it to, let's say, 30% up by the end of the day. 
and that potentially maybe in a few hours after that, it still stays up. And then you, th- you roll it over to maybe a day and a half. And then when it down, starts a downturn, you get out. The focus, getting a 20% return or more. You're just in and out, in and out. Now, that is when you're looking at a sea of coins that are having a down day. What is the market like today? Let's let's click that column. Uh, let's click that column again and see how coins are acting across the bay. Are we having a down day or are we having an up day? Well, when you click the down chart, how many coins are down today? So um, we have 5% down. We have Doge down. We have Loopring down. Mere protocol. So we have a lot of coins down today. Polygon flat, Solana flat, Cardano uh, slightly up. So a relatively flat day, which signals day trading. It doesn't show a pop We're at the end of the pop. So that is how you choose that coin to get in to. Now, if the entire market's up, then you're taking that pop with that coin. Um, next the long-term prognosis. So if you buy a coin, can you hold the coin? Absolutely, if it's five years or a couple of years. So I believe that Bitcoin will be going to 100,000 in five years. I believe that Ethereum will be going to 10,000 in five years. I believe that Doge will be going to a couple of dollars in a couple of years. But I'm not interested in buying these coins for three months because I think there'll be less value in three months than they are right now. So I don't want to be buying the coin to sell them in three months. I want to be buying the coin if I'm going to put them for long-term investment for long-term. What price point do I want to buy them at? I like an Ethereum at $29,000. Uh, I like to steal it. I like to steal the things. I don't like it cheap. Now, $31,000 is fine for Ethereum. but Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Bitcoin. I like a Bitcoin at like a $31,000 or $29,000. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not buying Bitcoin at like $33,000. I want a $31,000 or $29,000. Ethereum. I want Ethereum at $1,500, $1,700. I mean, yeah, it hasn't gotten there lately. It got to 1700 got to 1900 um, I'm not buying a 2100 No, absolutely not. It's because it's going to go right down. Um, I'm not buying Doge in the 20s. Absolutely not. I'm buying Doge in the 16s or the 17s or 18s. Um, but uh, if I'm buying long-term coins, I really like Bitcoin and Ethereum at this point. And you see how I'm very cautious about what long-term coins I, I want. I had told you several weeks ago, I didn't know about AMP for long-term. <laughs> And I said, I'm not confident with AMP yet, yet as a long-term hold. Thank goodness, because at this point, I don't think AMP is doing well. I would never have bought AMP long-term. Now, how about on the sell side? So the sell side, I know have a lot of viewers always ask questions on the sell side. There are different ways to approach the sell side. One, you need the money. Another, you don't need the money. So if you need the money, then you're going to have to sell at some point. So how do you sell? When do you sell? You sell when the market's up. Ultimately, you want to hope that the market remains flat, or it doesn't drown draft too much until you get that pop. And there will be pops. There will be up days that are just beautiful up days where everything is up 15, 20%. And that's when you get in and sell. And you have to hope that that day hits soon enough before you start to devalue too much. If you don't need the money, then there's two options. One, you just put away the coin and you don't look at it. Check back in a year and it'll be up. Or you say, hey, you know, um, I'd rather put that money into something better. I found something better. And I've already been trading a lot this year. And I made, you know, $1,000 on this other coin. I'll only lose $100 on this position. I'll take the loss. It'll offset the tax burden. The $1,000 win against the $100 loss. Now I only have a $900 net profit for the year on coins. Then I'll just do that because I see something better. I'll put the money in. There you go. And across the board, I really appreciate all your questions and comments overnight. So if you have a question about any respective coin you have uh, on, whether it's on the buy side or the sell side, jump in the live chat. Remember my advice at the moment is that I like buying and holding for five years on Ethereum and Bitcoin. I like um, day trading on coins that have a lot of volatility which I may find in the most down coins today, and tomorrow there may be the most up coins. I like flipping coins when the entire market's up for the day, which is not today, but was Monday and Tuesday, where I can really get into the coin and stay on that ride for one and two days until the, the, until the uptrend st- stops. Today, the uptrend is starting to stop. And finally, um, I like the ability to be in a coin because in case I'm wrong, and my bearish comments are wrong for the next three months, then I can stay in the position and I can cash out. Remember, don't be afraid to take profits because when you take profits, that's income. 
That's income. And you can do it over and over again. When you stay in a position, you're not treating it as an income position. You're treating them as, as a investment position. And then ultimately, if the coin loses value, you're not getting back your investment. It's always easier to take profits when you can. And the worst thing you can do is just lose a little bit of upside. Always take the profits where you can when be conservative. And with that, make sure you drop your comments in Overnight's Crypto. I always love answering questions across the board. And also, subscribe. A 400,000 subscribers is a YouTube record. I want you to part of this channel. Fastest growing cryptocurrency channel there is. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends to come over. Share these videos on Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram. Drop your comments across the board. Like this video and consider becoming a member. The link's at the top of the channel. Pin comment. I'll see you tomorrow morning on 930 live on air with more on Morning's Crypto.